Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at the solo play in Cuba Libre, one of the coin series of games from GMT. Quick disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this game. Back before I was doing the podcast on the YouTube channel, I used to be a really big fan of war games, especially solo ones. And one game that I played a bunch of was Labyrinth the War on Terror, which is a precursor to the coin design, which models counterinsurgencies with four different factions vying for control. But with my heavy focus on co-op gaming recently, I kind of lost the war game bug, until Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire reminded me how great they can be, and until one of our Patreon supporters asked me if I would cover the coin series. I reached out to GMT, and here we are. So was the coin series a hit, or did it teach me to avoid them in the future? Let's find out and get to the list. We're going to start with a mix at number five, and that's the feeling of variety in the four factions you can control in the game. On the positive side, they do have nice thematic and mechanical differences, especially between the three insurgent factions and the government faction, which is trying to hold control of everything. But also a pro for learning the game, a lot of the elements are consistent, especially between the insurgent factions. They share a lot of the same actions. So once you learn one of them, it's not too tough to figure out how the other ones work. But this goes a bit into the negative side here because some of the factions feel, I think, maybe too similar. Now, again, that's easier for learning the game, but it's not as exciting to play them. So if you're looking for vast differences like you'll find in something like Spirit Island or Root, you're not really going to get that here. And also the fact that they have really small differences between their actions can sometimes make the rules harder to keep track of. But we'll get into a full-on pro with my number four, and that's the great emergent narrative in the game. Now, first of all, the game already has great narrative in the event cards, which model both real and possible and completely fictional events in the revolution. But even more than that, I love the emergent narrative and the actions you take in seeing how control is taken and retaken by different factions, how alliances form and are broken. It's really a lot of fun and gives you a feel of a breathing revolution in all its intricacies and terribleness. But we're back to a mix with number three, one that leans pro for me, and that's how you use your resources in the game and execute your operations and actions. Each faction has four different operations they can execute, as well as three special activities that might go with them, and each of these costs a different amount of resources. And generally speaking, a lot of the factions can do almost as much as they want. They can really do a crazy amount of things on the board if they're willing to bankrupt themselves and leave themselves incredibly vulnerable for a lot of turns to come. So mostly I love this, the tough choices of which fires to put out, where to focus your energy, and how much resources to spend to not put yourself too much in a hole. The only reason this isn't a full-on pro for me is that some of the actions are really quick to resolve, really simple, don't feel that exciting. And then if you have to resolve uh, three AI turns in a row after that before you get to do something again, it doesn't always feel that interesting and fulfilling. Well, we're getting to another full-on pro, a really big one for my number two, and that's the event cards and how factions activate in the game. It's a great, clean, really interesting initiative system that encourages you sometimes to pass and build up resources because you want to jump on a more powerful card in the future. Also, it gives the game amazing replayability with just this basic deck because the order the events come out of and the big effects they can have on the island as a whole can really change up your play. But we are going to get to a full-on con, my only one for the review for my number one, and that's running the AI in the game. Now, I'm saying this is a con not because I strongly disliked it. I have a brain, and I've kind of played a lot of these games where I don't mind the flowcharts, and I can go through that stuff a lot. But I think a lot of gamers, even gamers who consider themselves fairly heavy gamers, will have a hard time dealing with all the different little intricacies here. And that's especially true because there's a lot of exceptions, like lots of event cards that'll do special things that'll be ignored based on the faction or based on what other event cards are in play. And then the action flowcharts themselves have a ton of tiebreakers, and it can be pretty tough sometimes to parse exactly what somebody wants to do. And again, a lot of the turns are so simple, like just doing an event or just putting a few troops down, that when you're first playing and you have to figure out exactly where they're going and what they're doing, it can make the game feel like it drags more than you want it to. Overall, I enjoyed Cuba Libre quite a lot. It felt nice to sort of come home to a heavier war game with a lot of fun things going on. 
I love the emergent narrative in the game. I love the tough resource choices. And I think the event mechanic that drives the whole game is genius. But all that being said, you have to be really careful before you get this one for yourself. Are you ready to run all of these AI bots with all of their complicated algorithms? Check my playthrough if you want to see what it looks like. But if you're ready to dig into creating your own history and dealing with counterinsurgency and you don't mind the AI, I think this could be a lot of fun, especially if you think you might sometimes play it competitively with other players, which will make things go a lot quicker and also really change up how wild that gameplay can get. Good gaming, everyone, and I'll see you at the next stop.